to God. As um, you are here for the prayers this morning from 9 to 9.30, one of the scriptures that um, the person who led the prayers used was Psalm 18. And he began to read of all the great things that God was going to do. Hallelujah. But that chapter 18 was written by David to celebrate the victories that God had given him. Hallelujah. Because God delivered him from all the hands of his enemies, including King Saul, who ought to be his mentor but became his tormentor. That was during the prayers this morning. Now the precious voices came with Psalm 18 and they began to connect the dots for us. Hallelujah. Psalm 18 verses 1 to 3. They read verse 3. I will read the first three verses so that you can know that God is already at work. Can I have an amen? amen. Says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and is my deliverer. Is my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. I don't know in whom you are taking refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Verse 3. And it says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Why? Because I'm saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. The King James, New King James says, for I shall be saved from my enemies. But the correct rendition, whether you will be saved or you have been saved, the correct rendition was by English Standard Version because it was after God had delivered him, he began to raise praises to the Lord. Hallelujah. And you also know that in the book of Judges, when men began to praise the Lord, what happened to the walls of Jericho? So either before or after, you are permitted to praise. Shout hallelujah. This praise is a praise of consolidation. Because we have the victory. We are sure that God has visited us. And therefore, we are celebrating and praising him to seal that which he has done in our lives. If you believe it, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Please, you may be seated in his presence. Glory to God. And thank you, Pastor Dan, for that very powerful prayer session. Glory to God. As we began the service, I felt a constraint in the spirit. I felt a constraint. And I said, you know what, Lord, what's this about? When I get in there, I will lead some prayers. And he came up and began to lead prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. To push back the walls. Glory to God. You must learn to minister in the spirit. He has made us sufficient ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but it's the spirit that gives life. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Hallelujah. We are grateful to God because the tone is set. Let me tell you, the tone is set. Tone is set. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we are going into the part two of our message, entering into our, the fullness of our consolidation. For short, you can just say entering into our consolidation. Last Sunday, we began to look at the prophetic word that the Lord gave us during the just concluded Wonder Working Word Conference. Hallelujah. And if you are joining us online, you're welcome. And we trust that that which God has begun to do and that which he did here this morning, you will be a partaker of it in Jesus' name. So we began to look into the prophetic word that he gave us. From two passages of scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, that if we will diffuse the fragrance of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
if we will spread the aroma of Christ, then things will begin, will begin to happen. Zechariah will begin to happen. Hallelujah. So last Sunday, we took the liberty to examine what the things that we ought to be doing is. Hallelujah. From 2 Corinthians chapter 2, from verses 12 to 17. But I will paraphrase, we've already read it, but I will give you the summary points that we discussed so as to bring you up to speed and then we'll take it higher. Hallelujah. Friends, listen. God is never short in his power. His hand is not short that he cannot save us. His ears are not deaf that he cannot hear us. Hallelujah. He's the almighty God. He has all power and is able to do all things. But if God is not coming through for us, God is not the problem. Hallelujah. You better check yourself. I better check myself. Glory to God. So what's the summary of God's expectation to qualify us for the prophetic word? We said, number one, that God will be opening doors of opportunities. He'll be opening doors to us. Those doors are already opening. I said, those doors are already opening in the name of Jesus. But as a caveat, you must be keen in the spirit to ensure that it's not just a test. Because not all doors open to destiny. But if God opens the door, sometimes he may open the door just to test our hearts. As he did for Apostle Paul in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. But you will recognize the door of God. You will recognize the opportunity that God brings. I thought I would have a better amen. amen. Listen, friends. It's a cause not to recognize God's opportunity. Somebody says, well, pastor, what are you saying? That's not in my notes. Go with me to Jeremiah. So when we're pushing back this morning, I need you to know that is important. If you do not, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17 from verse 5. Let's read verses 5 and 6. When you do not recognize the opportunities that God brings, it could be as a result of a curse. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Whose heart turns away from the Lord. Yes, next verse. He is like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the past places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. He says, He will not see any good come. The New King James says, He shall not see when good comes. May you recognize the good that God brings into your life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is symbolic of a people that trust in men and do not trust God. So it's caused that such people. Hallelujah. Amen. But I believe and trust him that you will recognize God's opportunities for your life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Many times, God's diamonds are always wrapped in the mold. And those opportunities that come that do not look like it, they may be the ones that God has destined to lead you to destiny. And you may be looking for the rosy opportunity, the opportunity of the 50,000 Naira job. You know, you say, this one, what's me? It's 50,000. How much have you earned since you left school? Hallelujah. Who are you to despise the days of little beginning? If the opportunity you are seeing is that of 50,000, grab it and put in your very best. Glory to God. And you are waiting for the opportunity of 250,000 naira to start. It may never come. Can I have an amen? amen. But may God open your eyes to see the opportunity God brings amen. in the name of Jesus. So he says to us that we'll be opening doors of opportunity. Number two, he wants us to be captives so that he can lead us as part of Christ's triumphal procession. He wants us to be captives. He must be captives. He wants to captivate our hearts. Hallelujah. 
Number three, very quickly, and one thing is this, if you are going to be a captive of God, if God is going to captivate your heart, it's a function of your yieldedness. You must yield. You must yield your will to his will. And then you must surrender the whole of your heart. There must first be a yieldedness of your will to his will. If he's going to captivate you. And then you surrender your heart to him. And then he will captivate your heart and it becomes easy for him to lead you. The reason why many of us struggle as Christians is because he has not captivated our hearts. We have not yielded ourselves as captives. He wants to captivate us. Hallelujah. Number three, he wants to use us to spread the fragrance, the aroma of his knowledge everywhere. <laughs> Glory to God. He wants to use us. But if you don't release yourself for him to be used, then there is nothing he can do. He has given you and I a free will. God is not the devil that will force you. He has given man a free will. And friends, that free will was given you so that you can make one choice to choose his will. Can I have an amen? amen. Number four, the fragrance we said we spread or manifest in two dimensions. Could be the fragrance of life to those who are being saved or to death. The fragrance of death to those who are perishing. To manifest in two dimensions. Positive and negative. They are all life and death. Hallelujah. They are in God's hands. Shout hallelujah. It says, I've said before you life and death. Choose life that you may live. It takes two terminals of a battery to make a complete circuit. Glory to God. The Yoruba folklore says it's the same teeth that the dog uses to bite. It's the same tooth that he uses to play with it. The, 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 what's the small dog called? Puppy. Or, is it kitten or puppy? Thank you. I want you, I want you to flow with me. It's the same thing that he uses to play with his puppy that he uses to what? That's life and death. He says, I've set before you life and death. Choose life that you may live. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So the fragrance that we carry can be life to those who are being saved and death to those who are perishing. Number five, the apostle Paul asked, who is equal to the task? Who is sufficient for this assignment? And the assignment is in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 5 and 6. We are not sufficient of ourselves, but our sufficiency is in God who has made us sufficient ministers of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Friends, you can't do this alone by yourself. And that's one of the reasons why many of us struggle as believers. The Christian life cannot be lived by yourself. You need Christ to come and live his life through you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are not sufficient in ourselves. Our sufficiency is in Christ, who has made us able ministers of the new covenant. Hallelujah. And number six, very quickly, in doing so, we must never be like many who make a trade, who make a trade of peddling God's word for profit. Your eyes must be focused. The reason why you are worshiping God is because you are the object of his worship. Hallelujah. He's the object of your worship. He created you to worship him. Can I have an amen? amen. Not because you want a contract of 100 billion. No! Because somebody is easy for you to point accusing fingers and say, oh, there are some fake pastors, there are some false prophets who are peddling God's word. You in your heart, you may be a peddler of God's word. If you are here just for the profit, you are a user of God. You just want to serve God so that he can bless you, so that he can give you children. The children you have been looking for, that may have been what brought you into God's presence, but it must not remain so. Shout hallelujah. There are many reasons why we come into church. Some people never find God until affliction comes. Give me Psalm 119 verse 67. It's affliction that drives some people to God's presence. Praise God. But when it does, when the affliction goes, don't go back to your old life. Can I have an amen? 
Don't go back to your old life. Don't go back to your old life. The psalmist said, before I was afflicted, I did what? I went astray. Many have, have gone astray, but affliction will arrest them and they will begin to keep God's word. For many, it's the affliction that drove them into church, God's presence. They've gone everywhere, gone to Otumokbo place, gone to Babalao place. The thing was still the same. And then he said, you know what? Let me go and try Jesus. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If that is you, welcome home. Can I have an amen? Yeah. It says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. But when you now come into his presence, begin to keep his word. Don't let the cause of, because, because for many, once the source of that affliction is taken away, you don't see them anymore. How many have been looking for jobs and now they got the job, but the job has taken them away from God's presence? How many are looking for children? How many are looking for husband? And they feel, well, they can have a godly husband in church. And now that they are married, that marriage has so occupied them that they are no longer able to serve God. You could be a peddler of God's word. Can I have an amen? amen. You could be doing it for profit. Now that you have gotten your profit, you are nowhere to be found. May that not be your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And number seven said, how must we be then? How must we serve if we will not be a peddler of God's word? In sincerity, we must be men of sincerity. Men with pure motives as one that is commissioned and sent by God. Your motives must be pure in God's presence. Hallelujah. Your motives must be pure. You must be sincere in your worship of God. Whether there is food to eat, you are serving God. Whether there is clothes to wear, you are serving God. Whether there is car to drive, you are serving God. For some, if your car has a problem, we will not see you in church. What happened before you got the car? You used to take along. You take keke, you take along to work. But now that you have a car, if your car has a fault, you will go to the office. But if, it ha if your car has a fault, you cannot come to church. Hey, actually, our car is faulty. And you know, I have my wife and two children. Uh, we, uh, we are a peddler of God's word. Search your heart. Hallelujah. I say, search your heart. And if that same car has a problem, it will stop you from going to work. You will go to work. Anyhow, you arrange for your friend to pick you. You will do anything possible. You take bolts. You take a drop. But if it's church, you will give excuse. Oh, there's no fuel. There is no car. There is a little problem with my car. You can give God excuse now, but before you had that car, you knew how you jump from along and take a care and get to where you are going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Must worship him in sincerity. Our motives must be pure. If we are going to be one that we spread forth, the aroma of Christ. Must not be for profit. Glory to God. This morning, as we continue in part two of this message, the million dollar question is how do we diffuse the fragrance and aroma of his knowledge everywhere? How do we do it? Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Verse 15 and 16. Because we have looked at those things that we must do, the state that we must be in. Second Corinthians 2, give me verses 15 and 16. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Verse 16. For to one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? So the million dollar question is, how do we diffuse the fragrance or the aroma of his knowledge everywhere? How do we do it? Verse 14, give me verse 14. How do we do it? Is it through the preaching of the word? But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. So how do we spread the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere? 
Is it through the preaching of the word? Hallelujah. Don't go quiet on me. Is it through the preaching of the word of God? Part of it. Yes. Can I have an amen? amen. You must be bold. Even if you be wrong, say it your mind, say it confidently. And sometimes when you say it confidently, you get away with it. Because the man who is marking you is not even sure of himself when he sees your confidence and your boldness. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, that these were unlearned men, illiterate, fair catch them. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. When the enemy sees your boldness at time, even if you are not accurate, he will fear. But we're asking you a question, I say, is it, and you are just looking at me. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. How do we diffuse the fragrance, the aroma of his knowledge? How do we do it? Is it through the preaching of the word? Maybe, yes, maybe. So how do we go about that? There are some offices you cannot preach. Hello? True of us? So if there are some offices you cannot preach, are you going to go from door to door to knock on people's houses? And to knock on their gates? To request to preach to the owner of the house? Is it he, is he going to be by waiting at the bus stop after work? By waiting at the bus stop to share tracts? Hallelujah. And begin to preach the word. When those guys are already tired, home is in their heart. There's nothing you are saying that will enter. So you can go there and be wasting your time. If you are going for flyering, praise God. But the man is thinking of how we take three or four along before he gets home. And you are there, you are trying to catch his attention to speak to him. You are wasting your time. You know it. Hallelujah. Amen. Or is it only by converging every Saturday, 9 a.m., and say we are doing evangelism? And then we go out and evangelism. Or let's go out fishing. Is it only by that? No, but that can be part of it. I'm not ruling out any of these things, but I'm saying look at how limited any and all of these methods are. Hallelujah. Amen. Or is it going to be by calling your compound meeting every Saturday morning? You are living in a compound. There are 10 rooms and there are 10 families there. And in the, you share one entrance and everybody have his own room and corner. And then every Saturday, the landlord calls you. So you have to do environmental. So you wait for the environmental. And then you have to the environmental. I have an announcement. And you begin to preach. They go listen to you. Hallelujah. The answer is yes, by preaching the word of God. Amen? But the how is the challenge. How? It's the how. You want to spread for the fragrance of Christ. But the how is the challenge. How effective are these ways that we have outlined and many more that you know. Let's allow the scripture to interpret itself. Let's go back with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. ESV. The how is the challenge. And not the challenge, but that's the thing that we need to examine. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. For who is? Who is? We are. I am. Verse 16. It says, for we are, you and I are, to want a fragrance from death to death. Give me verse 15 in Amplified Classic. Amplified Classic, verse 15. For we are the sweet fragrance of Christ. For who is? We are unto God. Discernible alike. Among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. We are. It's you. Give me the NIV, the NIV verse 15. The NIV says, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved. And verse 16, to the one we are an aroma that brings death. 
to the other an aroma that brings life. Hallelujah. It is true who? Through who? Through you. Through me. Through your life. Through my life. Through your person. Through my person. Hallelujah. God wants you to become the aroma. The pleasing aroma of Christ. It's you. You are to be the aroma. You are to be the fragrance. Thank God for the word. You can go preaching anyhow. You can go to the length and the breadth of the heart to preach. If your life is not preaching it, you aren't going to make an impact. You will make no impact. You must become, the word must become flesh in you. It says, for we are the aroma. Hallelujah. God's intention is that he wants the word to become flesh in us. In our daily living, in our conduct, in the, sp- the, the words that we speak. He wants it to be flesh. The word was with God and the word became flesh. John chapter 1 verse 14. And dwells amongst men. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the word that created the universe. That word had to become flesh before it could save the world. The word, this word we are talking about must become flesh in us. The word must become flesh and dwells amongst us. Then men can behold his glory as of the glory of the Son of God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's you, you must be the aroma. You must become the fragrance. Your way and manner of life, the words that you speak, your behavior, your conduct, your demeanor. Glory to God. Glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 1 to 3. NIV. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 1 to 3. New International Version. The word must become flesh. Thank God for going to knock on people's homes. It has its little impact. Thank God for the evangelism. It will go a long, a little way. Thank God for sharing tracks at bus stops. They are all correct. They will add up to it. But the most effective is you must become the aroma. What's the point in sharing tracks? Do you know that some folks, if they share tracks in their office, they will tear it before. Some people will even be bold to tear it before their face. Say you, if you are a Christian, I'm a bishop. Because of your manner and conduct of life. Hallelujah. And there are some folks, you don't even need to even share the chat. All you just need is say the word. Some of you can tell your boss, go to hell, and they will look forward to it. Hallelujah. Why? Because of your manner of life. Your conduct is discernible. They can see all over you God written. We are going to become an aroma of Christ, the fragrance of Christ. Yes, the word must come alive and become flesh in us, must become human in us. Second Corinthians chapter 3, let's hear what Apostle Paul had to say. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our written on our hearts, known and read by Hallelujah. Verse 3. You show that you are a letter from Christ. Amen? Amen. Says you show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. It says, you are our letter. Your manner of life is our letter. We don't need any letter of commendation. If they see you and what God has used us to, and what the Holy Spirit himself has done in your life, the work of transformation, the changed tongues, that you are no longer the loose canon talker or the loose, you know, you know, you know there are some folks. Their tongue is so sharp, like razor. Now, if they speak one word like this, you want to go and commit suicide. 
But now you are changed. Your words is seasoned with salt and bringing life to people. It says, now that you are, you are a letter from Christ, you show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? amen? Let's read the message. Second Corinthians 3, 1 to 3, the message. Does it sound like we are patting ourselves on the back, insisting on our credentials, asserting our authority? Well, we are not. Neither do we need letters of endorsement either to you or from you. You yourselves are all the endorsement that we need because you are the proof of our ministry. Your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. Shout hallelujah. By just looking at you, they can read Christ. They can see a complete work that Christ is at work here. They don't need any other letter. Shout hallelujah. Verse 3, Christ himself wrote. Christ himself wrote it. May Christ write you and commend you to the hearts of men in the name of Jesus. It says Christ himself wrote it not with ink, but with God's living spirit, not chiseled into stone, but carved into human lives. We are just mere publishers. And we publish it. Put your hands together for Jesus. Friends, that's how it has become an aroma. When the word becomes flesh in you and you become a living epistle known and read by all men. Glory to God. A preacher once said, men may not read the Bible, but they will read you. Open to the right chapter at any point in time. Hallelujah. It says men may not read their Bible, but they will read you. And that's why you must open to the right chapter where men provoke you. What chapter do you open to? Be angry and sin not. Amen? amen. He's allowed to be angry. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have an amen? amen? My pastor mentioned the Yoruba proverb to me. We were having a tete a tete. And he said, I will say it in Yoruba. He says, Omo Ali. Uh-huh. But Olori Omali, the chief of Omalis, is the one they will beg and will refuse. Do you understand? In other words, when it's time for you to be angry and you are not angry, something is wrong with you. Amen. But after you have manifested your anger, if you are now begged and pleaded with and you refuse to hear, you are a chief fool. Glory to God. In other words, men may not read the Bible, but they will read you. And you must open to the right chapter at all times. How do you behave when situations come across your way? Do you open to the right chapter of the Bible and do what Jesus will do? WWJD, what will Jesus do in this situation? That's the right chapter. They may not read the Bible, but they read you. What others will get away with because they are just unbelievers. There is no expectation from them. You do it and you can't get away with it. Hallelujah. God wants your life to be a testimony and an endorsement to his walking in your world. He wants your very lives to be a letter that anyone can read. An invitation to God's abundant life of salvation by grace. He wants your life to be the invitation. Shout hallelujah. He wants your life to be the invitation. He wants your life to be the invitation. That's God's desire. That's God's plan. He wants our lives to be the invitation. Prophet Jeremiah of old prophesied it. In Jeremiah 31, verse 33. Jeremiah 31, verse 33. He prophesied it. NIV. 
Jeremiah 31, verse 33, NIV. It says, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law where? In their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Written upon your hearts, not the one, you can cram it, it puts it in your mind, because it must first go to your mind before it enters your heart. If you don't read it, there's no way it can get into your heart. So if you have to cram it, cram it, so that it can travel from there to your subconscious. But if there's nothing there, there's nothing to, to go into your heart. Says, I will put my law in their minds. How do you allow the word of God to be put in your mind? Eat it voraciously. Put your Bible on tapes. If you want to sleep, keep listening until you fall asleep. When you wake up, it's on auto. Keep listening. Keep listening. Keep listening. Keep listening. It will be doing a work. Your soul does not sleep. It will be entering into your subconscious. And God's spirit will be able to write it upon the tables of your heart. It's a function of the more you read, the more it enters your mind. And then from there, it travels down to your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. So God wants us. He wants this word to become, you know, flesh in us. He wants this word to become flesh. Hallelujah. Go with me to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 23 to 29. God wants us to put on his word. He wants us to put on Christ. So that when men see us, all they are seeing is Christ. They are seeing various chapters. The way we respond to hurts. The way we respond to arguments. The way we respond when people cheat us. The way we respond to situations. That's what they want to read. They may not read their Bible, but they want to read you. And you must open to the right chapter. And the only way is to put on Christ. Because Christ is the word. Shout hallelujah. Now, before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith will be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came. Can I have an amen? Yes. Who was the guardian? The law. But when Christ came, we now have to put on Christ in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through, true, true, powered by faith. Verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on have you, let me ask you, have you put on Christ? Hallelujah. And what does it mean to put on Christ? Let's read on to 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek Neither slave nor free. There is no male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring. Hence, according to the promise. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There is no new formula or blessing that Christ brought except to plug you into the Abrahamic covenant. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3. All those blessings there. That's what Christ came to graft you into. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, from your kindred, from your father's house to the land that I will show you. You have left Egypt. You have left Babylon. Now you are in Christ. And he says, if you are now in Christ, I will make of you a great nation. May you become great. Amen. I said, may you become great. Amen. He says, I will bless you. May you be blessed. Amen. May your name become great. May you become a blessing. Amen. And verse number three, you see, this is what Christ came to do to graft you in. He says, I will bless those who bless you Amen. and will honor those who honor you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I will dishonor those who will dishonor you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. God wants you to be a blessing to the whole universe. Amen. You are not a local champion. I say you are not a local champion. You are not a local champion. The world is your parish. The universe is your marketplace. Shout hallelujah. 
Galatians 3, 29, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. So what are we saying? Our focus is on verse 27. Galatians 3, 27. As many of you as are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. To put on Christ means to be clothed with Christ. Give us the NIV. NIV. To put on Christ means to be clothed, to put on. The Greek word is the word wear, to put on. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But you know what the challenge is? Many of you put on Christ, but you never took off the old clothes. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Ebuka, come forward. Barabbas, yeah, come forward. Face the congregation. Which suit is bigger? Among, um, I need your jacket. Okay, no, you take your, leave yours. Remove yours. This is the man before Christ. Now he wants to put on Christ. Yeah. So this is the new clothes that he wants to wear. Mm -hmm. Let him wear it and let's see. Are you comfortable? No. Not really. But you know the thing? Many of us leave the comfort. He said not really. Right? But this is what many of us do. The old man is still there. Right? And then we now wear Christ on it. So there's now a fight. The old man, the new man. You want to manifest and show forth the new man. But the old man is still there on your skin. So when this man is having his way, what will happen? There's a struggle. And that's what happens in Romans chapter 7 that Paul talked about. He said, the things I want to do, I don't do. It's the things I don't want to do that I find myself doing. Who, this, who will help me, this wretched man that I am? Hallelujah. Because the old man has not been put off. So we are living the dual life, the double life. We still sneak to the club, come back. We still do women. We still do booze. We still do this. Because the old man had not yet been put off. It says, put on Christ. As many as are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. But we have refused to take away the old. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for them. Help him. Help him. In Paul's epistle to the Colossians, he expands this word when describing the character of the new man and admonishes us to put on the new self. Colossians chapter 1, chapter 3. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. It's a long read to 17, but this is the crux of today's message. Shout hallelujah. This is the crux. Because if we are going to manifest the fragrance of Christ, we must deal with that old man. Hallelujah. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are where, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. What are you seeking? What are you seeking? Listen, friends. Money. Thank you, ma'am. She said money. But that's the truth. And that's why Christ was not able to be formed in many of us. Apostle Paul, he was saying, look, I travel in prayers until Christ be formed in us. When you get saved, what are the things you are doing? Are you properly discipled? Do you submit yourself and yield your will to the will of God and surrender yourself 
so that Christ can captivate your heart. Because if Christ is not formed in those early formative years, and you are still carrying about two jackets, you will never live a successful Christian life all your life. Because you are not properly formed. Those initial stages when you get born again, one year, two years, three years, is the most critical. Because that's when you become formed. Doctors will tell you, even from the womb, some children are learning stuff. Glory to God. But when the child is not properly formed, he's a believer. The old clothes is still there and it's going about and it's confused, dupli- duplicious life. But listen, what are you seeking? As a young believer, all that mattered is church. Whether I have two trousers, it doesn't bother me. It's you where they look me and I ain't no say I get two trousers. Can I have an amen? amen? Two trousers, three shirts. That's all I had. And I will wash it, wear it, wash it, wear it, wash it, wear it. I didn't care. Who was looking at me? I bothered less. What mattered was the world. What mattered was Christ. That he would be found in me. That's what matters. Every meeting I was there, even the one I was not called, I would go there. Because that mattered more to me. Can I have an amen? amen. Until Christ be formed. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. You are just newly born again. It's money you are looking for. It's woman you are looking for. You are in trouble. Christ will, it will go take before Christ be formal. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on what? Things that are above and not on things that are on earth. In what, on what are you setting your mind? For you have died. Everybody say you have died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Let's read on. We are going to 17. When Christ who is your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Now verse 5. Put to what? Since you have died. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. You must kill anything that is earthly in you. Sexual immorality impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Hallelujah. On account of this, the wrath of God is coming. In this too, in this, you too once walked when you were living in them. Yes, all things have passed away. Can I have an amen? But it's an abomination to still be walking in Christ in any of these practices. says, but now you must put them all away. And he added some more. You know, those, four, those four sections, many of you say, ah, I cannot do it. What of this second section? Now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Do not lie to one another. Seeing that you have put off the old self with it. Seeing that you have done what? You have done what? With its practices. If you don't put off, then verse 10 says, and I've put on the new self. The problem is there is no putting off of the old self. The old self is not put off. You just put on Christ upon the old self. So lying continues. There are some folks that I've seen, if they don't lie, they are not comfortable. There must be an element of, they can't just be straightforward. You ask them, eh, and what happened? Eh, actually, sir, I was coming to, you know, as I was coming, I thought, just give a straight answer. No, you, you, you never hear a straight answer. So don't lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in what? After the image of his. If you are going to spread forth the aroma of God's knowledge everywhere, it's about putting on the new man. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout Hallelujah. Glory to God. The question is, have you put off the old self? 
with his practices? Have you put them off? Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, lust, and all of those. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, loose mouths. Have we put them off? If you are going to spread forth the aroma of Christ, these are the real issues. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to verse 10. And I've put on the new self, which has been renewed in knowledge after the image of his creator. Here, verse 11, there is neither Greek nor Jew, uncircumcised, uncircumcised, or circumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. It's not about your tribe. Whether you are Greek or Jew, Ijo, Nupe, Izon, whatever it is you are. No. It's about putting on Christ. Glory to God. Next verse. Now this is where the rubber hits the road. The New King James is the character of the new man. It's about your character. It's about your person. It's about the word becoming flesh in you. Put on then as God's chosen ones. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Hallelujah. If you are, it says put on then as God's chosen ones. Holy and beloved. Number one, compassionate hearts. Number two, kindness. A compassionate heart. A heart that demonstrates mercy. Tender mercy. A compassionate heart. One that has compassion towards people. You are compassionate. What touches men touch you? Kindness. We had the tongue of the Lord of kindness. You must, have, you must be kind. Be ready to help in your own little way. There is nothing like I don't have. There is something you have. You may not have money, but you may have good words. You may not have money, but you have muzzle. You may not have money, but you have company. You may not have money. You have one credit to say, hi, I just want to say, check up on you and see how you are doing. Kindness. Number three, talks of what? Humility. In your actions, I'm the boss. Don't you know I'm the boss? You are not the boss. If you have to announce that you are the boss, you are not the boss. Hallelujah. Don't you know I'm the head of this house? You already dethroned a long time ago. Even the children know you are not the head. When you have to exert your authority in this office, don't you know I'm the chief executive? Watch it. Something is already going wrong somewhere. Hallelujah. Humility. Then in terms of meekness and patience. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 13. Bearing with one another. Do you have that? Can you bear with other people? Can you live with other people's mistakes? Can you forbear in your heart? If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. The heart of five years ago, you are still bringing it to my face, bringing it, pointing it. That's how you did three years ago. As a matter of fact, last year at WWC, that's how you messed us up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And then they, all the, it says forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must. You just hold it in your heart. And when you see the person coming, you squeeze your face. You, are still, you, you have put on the new man upon the old self. Bearing with one another. If one has a complaint against another, he says, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So also you must forgive. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4. There's a parallel scripture, almost word for word. They're going to put on the new man, Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 1. And where are we to demonstrate this? Is it by going to knock? This is the real evangelism. This is the real aroma. If you are going to spread for the fragrance, this is the real stuff. It's in your character. Character smells. If he that's what the Yoruba folklore says. Character smells. It's like smoke. You can't hide it. That's the, the, the one that depicts the real you. That's the real aroma. The I, therefore, 
a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. Hallelujah. It says you must walk worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Please give it to me in the New King James. So walk worthy of the vocation. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling. Give me the original King James. The calling there, I need to explain it. To walk worthy of the calling. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the where with you are. What is your vocation? What is vocation? What you do. What is vocation? What you do for a living. That's your vocation. I'm an engineer. That's my vocation. You're a doctor. You're a nurse. That's your vocation. For you to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. And your vocation is where you spend the num highest number of hours. Some work Monday to Saturday, nine hours every day. That is where to preach and spread the aroma of the fragrance of Christ. Can I have an amen? Yeah. And it's not by preaching and every lunch hour, 12 noon, now or we go and go to one corner and you are joining prayer. Every day, 12 to 1. What has that produced? Has that changed you? Has that become, have you become more compassionate? Have you, do you, are you now more kind? Do you still live in unforgiveness? All the shako, 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 kawasaki, kawasaki. 12 to 1 every day. What has that done to you? It says, put on the new man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where you are called. It's in your vocation that you can demonstrate the Lord of kindness. It's in your vocation. People hurt you and you, don't, you open to the right chapter and you forgive them. It's in your vocation that you manifest patience. Your boss is a tough boss, but you are ever patient. The man is coming with high voltage. You, put, you are there as a transformer. You step it down. And it gets, all the anger just melts. A soft answer turns away raw. But the man is angry and used to, yes, you have been doing this all the while. I will give it to you today. That's the end of your career. But when you open to the right chapter, I'm sorry, sir. It's not like that. And all the high voltage becomes stepped down. Hallelujah. I beseech you, the prisoner of the Lord, you are worthy of the vocation wherein you are called. It's what worthy of the calling. You must see your vocation as a calling. You are a teacher, a lecturer. That is your calling. You are a doctor. That is your calling. You are a nurse. That is your calling. You are a carpenter. That is your calling. You are a fisherman. That is your calling. You are a driver. That is your calling. See it as your calling. Hallelujah. Go back and give me verse 2. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So in that vocation, verse number 2, with all lowliness, go back to my ESV. I just wanted to show you that calling. What worthy of the calling, wherein you have been called. That calling there is your vocation. You must see your vocation as your calling. Not everybody will be called to mount the pulpit as a pastor, evangelist, apostle, teacher. No. That is your calling. Your vocation must be your calling. You must see it as your calling so that you can open to the right chapter when men begin to read you. Because some of you think it's only in church. You are nice. Everybody gives a testimony. Oh, that quiet sister. Meanwhile, you are fire, fire at the office. In your compound. Hey. When you come like this, everybody they fear. Say, hey, she don't come. She don't come. Don't even go there. You see, the where, where you spread your clothes on the line, nobody will move their own near you. Because you can come and say, who touched my, this is my cloth? And yet in church, I just want to be where you are. <laughs> Brothers, better shine your eyes. Can I have an amen? amen? Not all that charismatically glitters is spiritual gold. Charisma, they may have the charisma. They handle the microphone and pray. You hear the tongues, deep tongues. And yet, there's nothing. When they talk like this, you run. Says this one born again or born again. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus.
Glory to God. I beseech you, therefore, as a prisoner of the Lord, that you walk worthy of the calling wherein you have been called, your vocation wherein you are called, with all in your vocation. With all in your vocation. With what? Patience. Bearing with one another in Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Give it to me more. Next verse. Jump down to verse 32. Just give me verse 32. Check out all those things that were said. Go to verse 32. Be kind to one. Tender. Forgiving. As God in Christ forgave you. In your vocation. That is the real place. Where God has called you. Where you can be most effective to spread his aroma. Hallelujah. After all, that is where you spend the better part of your life. Think about it. Monday to Saturday, 8 to 5, 8 to 6, you are there. How many hours do you spend in church? You get home, you are tired, you are sleeping. Where do you have to demonstrate the aroma of Christ? Better than your workplace. Glory to God. I said glory to God. If you are going to spread the aroma of Christ, that is the real place. But we play church and, you know, do all manners of spiritual gymnastics that doesn't cut it. And we are wondering, where is our consolidation? They don't cut it. Glory to God. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 3. And I begin to round up this morning. Oh my God, my time is gone. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's just read verse 14 and then we stop at 17 and we continue next Sunday. On Thursday. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Friends, look, I told we must, this prophetic word, God is not a magician. Can I have an amen? When you live according to his word and according to his principles, especially when he gives you a prophetic word, you'll be on the cutting edge. Colossians 3.14. Above all of these things, you have put off the old man, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil concupiscence, evil desires, anger, wrath, and all of those things. And then you have manifested kindness, temperance, perseverance, patience, Above all this, put on what? Which what? Binds everything together in perfect harmony. Shout hallelujah. Say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. First Peter chapter 4 verse 8. It says above all. First Peter 4 8. First Peter 4 8. Above all. Above all. Above all. Give me first Peter chapter 4 verse 8. See the same parallel scripture. Above all, do what? Keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Shout hallelujah. Love is what binds everything together. All of those virtues, love binds them together. And then Colossians 3, continue verse 15. And after you have put on love, imagine it says put on Put on love. Go back to that first verse 14. Underline it. Put on love. Who is love? God is love. You must put him on. After putting off the devil and all his works, you must put on God. Above all this, put on love. You must put him on. He binds everything together in perfect harmony. Verse 15. And let the peace of Christ rule where? In your hearts. To which indeed you are called in one body. You are a man of peace. And then you should be what? Be thankful. Hallelujah. Verse 16. So therefore, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Hallelujah. And verse 17 caps it up. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hallelujah. 
it is my pleasure to let you know it is when we have done all of the above, we'll be equipped to diffuse his fragrance. And everywhere we go, we'll become the aroma of Christ. And the promises of the prophetic word will become activated automatically. And the nations will respond to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up on your feet this morning. Father, we thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give you praise. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Just thank the Lord this morning for his word that he has brought, his word of revelation, his word of illumination that he has brought our way to position us accurately, to position us accurately, to be able to, be able to activate the word of God automatically in our lives. Yes, Lord, we want to we yield ourselves, we yield our will to your will, and we surrender ourselves to you. We ask, oh God, that you take us captive, take us captive, captivate our hearts, oh God. Help us to put off the old man with the sexual impurity, sexual immorality. Yes, anger, wrath, evil desires. Help us to put them off. All the old self and his practices, all the works of the flesh. And help us to put on Christ, to put on the new man. Help us, Lord. Lift up your voice and pray for yourself. Say, Lord, help me, help me, help me, Lord. To put off, help me to put off, help me to put off the old man. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. We worship your majesty. Thank you, Father. So let it be in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. All heads bowed this morning and all eyes closed. I want all heads bowed and all eyes closed. You are in God's presence. You are here this morning. You have heard this word of the Lord. That there is need for you to put off the old man. As many of you who have been baptized into Christ, the Bible says we should put on the new man. But perhaps there are people here who are yet to be baptized in Christ. They are yet to come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they have heard the word of God. The starting place is to submit and to surrender yourself to the Lord Jesus. To have him as your Lord and your Savior. So if you are here this morning, I'm here to give you the opportunity and the privilege. It's my singular opportunity, my singular privilege to make this call to you. And if you hear him, don't harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. So if you are here this morning, you are not yet born again. You are not yet born again. You have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Please raise up your right hand wherever you are. Raise up your right hand above your head. You want to accept Jesus as your Lord. You want him to be your Lord and your Savior. Raise it up above your head. God bless you. Just raise it above your head. God bless you. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Raise it up. If you are raising up your hand, please step forward. Just come forward. Just come forward. Or you are here this morning. You are not, you are baptized, you are born again, but you are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial vocal evidence of speaking with other tongues. I also like to pray with you. You have been born again for months, for years, but you are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial vocal evidence of speaking with other tongues. Please raise up your hand wherever you are. I would love to pray with you. If you are raising it up, please step forward as well. I would just love to pray with you. It's my privilege to pray with you. Don't harden your heart. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I came out 10 different times before I could receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing to be ashamed of. God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Just come. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Please close your eyes and say after me. Father, I come before you today as your child. You created me. I agree that I am a sinner. And I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for me on the cross of Calvary. I accept him 
as my Lord and as my Savior. I make up my mind from today, the 7th of July, that Jesus will be my Lord and I will follow him all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Lord, you have said anyone that comes to you, you will not cast away. Accept your son into your beloved in the name of Jesus. Save him to the uttermost. Write his name in your book of life in the name of Jesus. If there be any covenants, appointment with death and hell, by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, I cancel such appointments now in the name of Jesus. I decree that you will not die, but you will live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And the people of God say,